Okay, tax students, we're into a new chapter, chapter number six in our textbook, where we have two broad topics. One is called accounting periods and methods. This is the first part of chapter six, and this part one of two videos. And the other half of chapter six deals with other types of taxes beyond the income tax we've been learning last semester and the beginning of this semester. Other types of taxes that may have to be reported on our Form 1040. So let's take a look at accounting periods. So what we have to do in any one tax return, we have to report one year's worth of information, one year's worth of transactions. And for most individuals like you and me, we use the so-called calendar year. In other words, all of 2018 on one tax return, all of 2019 on one tax return. As compared to possibly other types of taxable entities like partnerships or corporations. Now for most partnerships that are owned by individuals, and most corporations, a type called S corporations, and we'll learn all of this later in the semester, that are owned by individuals. These types of um, business entities, including corporations that sell their personal services, like lawyers, doctors, accountants, plumbers, anybody that sells services, have to use a calendar year. Now, if you're a corporation, not this S-type, not a personal service corporation, possibly you can use a different year end than, let's say, December 31st for a calendar year. If we take a look at the um, 1040 form, you notice at the very top, this is the whole calendar year 2019. It doesn't give you a choice yet because it's not real common. I've never seen an individual not use a calendar year. But if you take a look at a corporation return, again, not that S type or not that personal service type, they have a choice either using a calendar year, that's the um, most common situation, or if they don't use a calendar year, their year end is called a physical year, meaning that the year begins not on January 1st. Although this form is made for um, corporations that begin their year on 2019, let's say we're looking at um, an example here. So a common big company would be the Apple Corporation that sells iPhones. And their year begins around October 1st here, 2019. And then roughly 12 months later, on September 30th, would be their year end. But it's now the next calendar year, 2020. So this period of time also includes 12 months, just like a calendar year. So if you're a corporation, usually the big ones, they can adopt and, or choose whatever year end they want on their first year. But from then on, they got to continue using that same year end unless they request permission from the IRS to change their year. Apple is a little bit different, not quite October um, 1st and not quite September um, 30th. They have something called a 52 or 53 week calendar year. In the case of Apple, it's the closest Saturday um, at the end of September. That's the year end. And the very next day would begin the um, next year. But this is the typical way most um, physical years work. They end at the end of a month and begin the very next day, the beginning of the next month. Again, that's called a physical year, not a calendar year. And most individuals are calendar year. And again, if you want to change your year, you can ask permission from the IRS, but it may not be worth it because you may have to pay a, a tax ahead of time to offset any tax savings you think you would have by changing your year. Let's take a look at um, 
And a short periods apply when you change your year. And again, this probably would be for a corporation. And again, if you don't change your year, this won't apply. Accounting methods determine when you report income or and when you report expenses or deductions. So there's three broad types you can see here listed that we'll get into. Uh, there may be more than these three types. For example, maybe you've learned in another accounting class something called percentage of completion or maybe the installment method. Kind of advanced topics, but uh, uh, it is used by some taxpayers. The most common type of accounting method is cash. So for most of individuals like you and me again, we use the cash method. And maybe you learned in a prior accounting class, uh, that would be probably accounting 124 or maybe accounting 201. What you had learned is this accrual method basis of accounting. Okay, so sometimes it's kind of confusing. We teach you this hard accrual method in previous accounting classes, but probably for most individuals and small businesses, they use this simpler method called cash basis. And if you want to use a combination of both cash and accrual, then you can then use this uh, hybrid method. Now, once you choose one method, you got to stick with it from year to year. And again, if you have a business reason to change your accounting method, you can get permission from the IRS, but you have to apply for that. It's not an automatic uh, approval. Let's take a look at the cash method of accounting. So when do you report revenue that you get taxed on? It's when you receive the money. Okay. So if you haven't received the money, there's no income to report. And when do you report deductions? It's when you pay, or here they use the word disperse the money. Here it mentions it's probably the most common method for individuals, common method of accounting for individuals. And here again, we report income when we receive the cash, when we receive the check, receive the payment from our customers, or receive, in most of our cases, receive the money from our employers. Not when you earn the money. And when do you report deductions? It's the year or when you pay it. Not when you buy something, not when you use up the costs. Okay, it's when you pay for it. Here they mention there's an exception to making payments ahead of time for rent and interest. If you pay your landlord early, before it's due, like next year's rent, next month's rent that falls into next year, you cannot deduct it this year when you make the payment. Same thing is true if you prepay any interest ahead of time. You only can deduct the rent that applies to this year that you had paid and not any rent you had paid in advance. You only can deduct any interest for this year's charges, not for next year's interest if you had prepaid it. Now, if you didn't pay rent or didn't pay your interest, then you don't have a deduction. But if you pay too much, again, next year's rent and expense, then it's not deductible. Now, if you pay prepay other types of expenses, you typically can deduct it when you pay it. Usually as long as whatever you had prepaid is used up by the end of next year, by the end of next year's December 31st. If it goes beyond that next year, then you may have to wait to deduct that excess into that future year. Here it mentions that certain types of taxpayers, certain types of entities cannot use the cash method. So we saw before that um, corporation, not the S type, but this co type called C. And we'll learn about S and C type corporations again at the end of our um, semester. Same thing if a partnership has a partner, one of the owners is a corporation. They cannot 
use the cash basis. Also, if the business has more than 25 million of sales or what they call gross receipts during the year, they can't use the cash method. This last bullet here is an advanced topic you may see only in the graduate classes where you have nonprofit organizations running a business that's unrelated to their nonprofit mission and they're making a profit and they cannot use the cash basis. So if you cannot use the cash basis of reporting income when collected and deducting expenses when paid, what method do you have to use? Well, the next method mentioned was the accrual method of accounting, where you report the income. This word recognize means the same thing as reporting the number on the tax return. Reporting income when not collecting the money, but when the money is earned, when the uh, customer is obligated to pay you because you've already made the sale to them or if you've already done the work for them. Okay, so that's income under the crew method. You report it when you earn it. And um, for the case of deductions, you report it, you deduct it. Here you recognize that deduction. Not when you pay the money, but when the costs, when the expense, they use the word incurred. I like to define the word incurred as the costs, the related costs being all used up. So if the cost is not used up yet, you cannot deduct it. We call that type of cost an asset. And the asset cost is going to be giving you a benefit in the future. It's only in the future when that cost is used up, you get to deduct it. But if the cost is used up this year, we're going to deduct that cost as an expense. And maybe you didn't even pay for that cost yet. But as long as you use up the cost, that's the time. That's the year we report the related deduction. And then again, a combination of cash and accrual, we call that hybrid. So maybe part of the business you go use the accrual method, and the rest of the business you can go cash method. So a common situation where the hybrid method is utilized is in the case of small merchandisers or maybe medium-sized merchandisers where you deal with, um, uh, let's call this uh, inventory. You're going to buy inventory and you're going to sell inventory for your store. So here's the buying of inventory. Sometimes we call this purchasing or purchases. And here we're selling the inventory to our so-called customers. And we call this sales. Of course, the purchases is coming from some kind of uh, supplier or wholesaler or manufacturer. So any transaction dealing with purchases, any transaction dealing with sales of inventory, the law says you got to use the accrual method unless there's an exception to that. But for your business, any other transaction, like paying your employees, paying um, paying your your rent at least one month's worth or paying your utility bills that type of transactions can use the cash method in other words everything here is accrual dealing with inventory and the rest of your business even maybe collecting rent from a tenant you're subleasing some property can go cash method Again, combining accrual and cash is this hybrid, hybrid method. Let's talk about dealing with related parties, dealing with relatives, dealing, dealing with your own company. If dealing, again, that's buying and selling um, items, maybe even services, is going to create a loss for you the loss is not deductible. Okay, If you deal with your relatives, deal with your own business, and you have a profit, you got to report the profit. 
But again, if it generates a loss, you cannot deduct the loss. The specific law that um, prohibits this loss is called a Section 267 transaction. Again, you're dealing with related people, typically people in your immediate family, like your um, brother, sister, parent, children, or maybe companies that you own and control. And you, the taxpayer, again, if you suffer a loss, the loss is not deductible. What can happen, though, is whoever bought the property from you that created your loss, eventually, if they sell it at a profit, they can reduce their taxable, taxable profit by the loss that you couldn't deduct. Okay, that's not you now. That's the other person you sold the property to, the related party can reduce their profit by your loss or undeductible loss. Again, this is called a Section 267 transaction. So here's a list of people that are considered to be related. And if you sell stuff to them at a loss, your loss is non-deductible. Again, family members, or if you own a corporation that you can control because you own more than 50%, um, these two are between corporations. So typically if one corporation called a parent owns another corporation called a sub and they have dealings between each other and one suffers a loss, the loss is not deductible. But whoever bought the property that resells it at a gain, now that buying uh, party can deduct the loss from the other side. A brother-sister is just generally another subsidiary from a parent. So these two here, the two subs, are considered to have a brother-sister relationship. So if they buy and sell stuff between each other, any loss is not deductible. But again, this only applies to losses. If there is a gain, a profit uh, from transactions between related bodies, the, um, the gain is taxable. Another situation is where one party is using the accrual method and the other party is using that cash method we had discussed a couple slides ago. So if maybe one party accrues an expense and hasn't paid it to the other party, which is cash basis, who has not reported the income because they haven't collected it yet, then this accrual basis party cannot deduct the expense. Okay, it's trying to like shift around um, a deduction or income. Yeah, so they're prohibiting that type of deduction from being um, subtracted on the tax return. Okay, so again, if later on the person that bought the property sells it, the loss can be used against any income that person has to report later on. Now, if the, uh, the party sells it again at a loss, not to a, unrelated, uh, a related party, then the loss cannot be used because it only can offset gain. Okay, let's stop here and go ahead and continue taking a look at part two of this uh, video lecture where we take a look at other taxes besides income taxes that we have to report on the 1040 form.